Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to have a quick look at this weird little uh, blue-grey box here. Now, bizarrely, uh, this was actually listed on eBay as a Ceteram Group SFIM unit, um, which is completely <laughs> ridiculous uh, description to put on an eBay, eBay auction. Uh, I Personally, I think this might be called a Ceteram CS32. And uh, yes, if you start Googling around for that, you'll start to find a bit of information on this so um, yeah there, nobody else bid on this um, to be honest it's part of a larger system and it was probably unlikely um, it would have sold for much anyway uh, without it all being complete and together so this is uh, actually a Ceteram CS32 controller um, uh, from what uh, research I have done it seems to have been part of a thermal analysis system uh, so there would have been other bits that went along with this um, the science element, which is a large calorimeter, uh, would have been attached to this. And it seems that this uh, box here is a processing controller uh, that connects all with the science elements. And then a PC connects to this to actually get some data out of it. Now, as usual, there is no indication of how much all this stuff cost when it was new. Uh, I'm not even sure what year this is dating from. Um, I would say late 1990s i would say but the, there is a few people selling parts and complete systems on ebay for crazy crazy money um you know thousands and thousands of pounds which is probably a bit unrealistic to be honest given that i picked this up for 15 quid uh what i would say is looking at it uh, from the outside it looks to be uh, quite a well-made unit um it looks like they've spared no expense uh, so uh, it'd be interesting to see on the inside what's going on so, as we can see, we've got a blue box with um, got a LED light on the front there, stick here, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a few uh, of these uh, screws on the front, so I suspect that front panel comes off, but it, the whole box seems to be fairly modular, so I think it all just all unscrews and falls, to, falls apart if you want it to. Um, nice captive screws in the front there. Um, turn it around to the side, nothing on the sides, and then at the back, uh, we have all the connections that would have gone out to the computer and to the science part. First look at this is there's probably going to be a card frame. Um, so these look like plug-in modules. And and indeed, uh, looking at other pictures on the internet of this unit, it's, I've seen different options plugged in here. So there must have been interchangeable stuff depending on what you were trying to do. Uh, so in this end slot, uh, we've got power supply input, um, you know, standard IEC socket. Uh, we've got an on light, an accessory port, and uh, four uh, DIN sockets there, and an I/O port. So it looks like this is possibly like the main part, which is probably the same on all of the units. There's probably a power supply on that board as well. Uh, next along, we've got two serial ports. Um, port A and Port B. Interesting, somebody's drawn a little arrow pointing to A, just to remind them which one to plug it in. Um, then next to that, we've got these um, these modules here that have been plugged in. Um, not sure what they do. We've got um, measure um, written on that one, regulation written on this one. Um, this just says series 15, series 15. Um, and this one says measure AUX. So these are obviously, you know, as I said, plug-in cards, depending on what, you, what you're actually doing. Um, interesting, these two are actually connected together as well by this uh, little loop-through loop through cable. Uh, down on the bottom here, we've got a, a serial number plate, um, 50287030079, made in France. Not very often you see things made in France, so uh, shout out to all my French viewers. And of course, we have nothing on the bottom, apart from some feet, and we've got a rattle. Um, that's never a good sign. So uh, let's start taking these cards out and uh, we'll see what is what. So we'll start with the, what seems to be the power supply.
Oh, that's quite a nice, uh, let's just turn the brightness down there for you. To, yeah, power supply module. A big. Connector on the side there, you can see a big capacitor in there. Heat sink. And there's definitely a rattle going on in there. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. So yes, inside there, we've, there's not, I can't really see much in the back there. There's, uh, looks like there's a back plane these modules are gonna plug into. So let's go for the serial port. What we'll do is take all these all these cards out together, get the box out of the way, and then have a look at them in a bit more detail. Oh, nice. Uh, these actually have the uh, the pull tabs, which actually eject the card out. So um, um, these are once the screws have been released, you can push them away, and it pops the card out. Right, oh, um, so yeah, it looks like uh, one of the CPU cards of some description. We have a Motorola 68020, so um, yeah, they needed a, a bit of bit of grunt in this system. Uh, we've got uh, what looks like memory down there, um, ROM. Um, that's quite a compact board for a 68000 system, complete. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a minute. This module here is actually in the way of the eject function. Oops, that's well, no longer fitted. Okay, so looks like this is some kind of acquisition board or something. We shall have a look once we've got the rest of them out. much on that one uh, okay that's just a, a like an IO expansion thing it looks like um, I'm not quite sure why that needs to be given that it just plugs into that card anyway but there we go <laughs> and last card yeah it's definitely not a huge amount in here So we have a small card here, um, transformer on it, actually the other one did as well, didn't it? So yeah, another another card. So yeah, there's nothing else left in there now. There's a couple of connectors up at the back there, which don't seem to be attached to anything at all. They're literally just looped and cable tied. These cables here, it's literally just a loop of cable and it's been cable tied to the front there. So that's obviously some kind of spare or accessory cable or something that's not used. And there's nothing on the back of the back plane, um, nothing there. So that's literally just a interconnection there. Right, uh, let's start taking a look at these cards now. They all seem to have these uh, boxes mounted on them. Uh, maybe that's some kind of interface or something. Nine pin D, D connector on there. I wonder. So yeah, looks like we've got a little Facey thing on there. I'm not quite sure why you would need to do that. And in here, we shall have a peek. Hmm. 
<clears throat> yeah, we've got like a, a little interface module thing going on there. <clears throat> Not quite sure why you would why you would need that, but maybe it's sacrificial, or or you need to change them in and out for different ones, um, possibly. I can't quite see the. There's a couple of uh, eight pin devices on there. I can't quite see what they are. They could be off amps or something. A few other pots, trimmers, jumpers. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, how does that come off? So yeah, it looks like we've just got some op amps. Um, OP05. Yeah, those are going to be op amps. I'm sure of it. Interesting. Any ideas? Uh, interesting with the boxes. Um, nice little Eddie Stone boxes, um, which is now um, Hammond, if I recall. So, yeah, interesting. We have a transformer on there, and it looks like we've got some local voltage regulation as well. So, um, yeah, that uh, some of those traces are definitely coming from there. So maybe this actually picks up AC and converts it to DC here on the board rather than using the power supply um, that we pulled out. So that's interesting. I've got a couple of devices here. We have an, an LT399AH uh, voltage reference just in there. And right at the front here, we have an analog devices AD7703CN. And that is a 20-bit AD converter. Um, looks like we might have some um, opto-isolation stuff going on here as well. So yeah, definitely looks like some kind of acquisition card. Um, yeah, those voltage regulators. We've got uh, a 7805, um, 7905. What's that? LM340. So yeah, a little bit of local, local voltage regulation. And the rest of it is just a 7.4 series logic. Oh yes, uh, not much on this one, but let's have a quick look at this interface box thing. Let's see whether it's similar to the other one. Okay, so uh, it's similar, but it is different. There's, uh, yeah, uh, there's a few bits and bobs in there. Let's just, let's take the front off it. So yeah, we've got a, an op amp in there and there's a, a relay as well. So um, yeah, not really sure what this is for, but uh, it's obviously, Signal conditioning or something, preamp. Right, uh, next card to look at was this one that had uh, two interfaces on it. Uh, well, actually, it's three because that uh, that plugged into that uh, other little card. Um, so we've got uh, more modules. I, I would, I'm not going to open these ones. They're probably going to be the same. Um, so it looks like we've got three channels coming in. Um, we've got more of those AD7703 um, A to D um, converters. Um, yeah, three separate channels coming in and then obviously getting processed by this um, EPM7160 ELC84. Um, yeah, that's just a, a PLD. Um, two, sorry, 3200 gates. So. And then we have another, it looks like a ROM or something there. Let's just peel the sticker off. And we've got another PLD, APM7032, which is like a smaller version of that. So, so yeah, not ROM. Of course, yeah, these are EEPROM based uh, PLD, so you don't need any external memory or anything. So, yeah, obviously doing a little bit of processing to pass it through um, to the edge connector and then out to this, the processor board that we're going to have a look at in a moment. Uh, got a a 16 megahertz oscillator there. Um, yeah, again, 
like the uh, like the other board, we've got local voltage regulation. We've got quite a few going on there. Um, let's have a quick look. 7905, 7805. 7905, 7805, 7905. So yeah, we've got uh, separate um, plus minus five volt rails. Uh, plenty of date codes on these. Uh, so this dates this to uh, 1997. I wasn't too far out when I said uh, late 90s. All right, let's have a look at this CPU board. Right, let's have a quick look around. Um, so over this side we have uh, some Toshiba TC55-1001. Um, those are 128K SRAMs, so we've got four of those, so we've got half a megabyte of RAM. And then just below these we have some Intel P82C542s, uh, which according to the data sheet are a programmable interval timer. Um, so uh, high performance HC MOS version uh, of the industry standard 8254 counter timer, which is designed to solve timing control problems common in microcomputer system design. Uh, three independent 16-bit counters, um, capable of handling clock inputs up to 10 megahertz. Um, software programmable. Mm, yep, yeah, so we've got three counter timer things there. Um, we've got another one here which is a different part, but it's a DP8570. Um, that again is a counter timer, but it uh, can also do um, real time clock. And it does actually look like there's a, um, a 32 kilohertz watch crystal just there. Doesn't seem to be any battery on this though, so uh, I don't think it was really keeping time. Um, Next to that we have uh, an EEPROM, um, we'll pull that off in a moment and have a look if there's anything interesting in it. Um, we've got a, a CPLD next to that, so it's probably just doing a bit of um, glue logic to uh, glue everything together. And above that we have a 60 MHz crystal, um, obviously this is obviously been clocked at um, 16 MHz. Um, now, obviously, this is the main CPU, and this is a Motorola 68020, um, which is uh, you know, a reasonably sized um, part. I mean, it's uh, it's got a fair bit of grunt in that, really. Um, 16 megahertz, and it's the 020 version. So, yeah, they. Uh, I'm surprised they're using a CPU and not something like a DSP or something, maybe. Uh, because right next to that, we have a Motorola 68882 Maths coprocessor. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting combo. Go figure. Um, so next to that we've got um, an empty empty slot there. Now that could potentially allow for a second math coprocessor maybe. Um, not entirely sure. I seem to remember you could you could parallel them if I recall, if I recall right. Um, but yeah, not sure. And next to that we've got an MC68681P. Um, that will be a UART uh, which will run out to the two serial ports just here, uh, obviously with opto isolation. Right, before we look at that um, EEPROM, let's have a look at this um, power supply box. Um, I think it's a, possibly a bit more than just a power supply. Right, uh, this looks like it is mostly uh, power supply. We've got a really nice looking transformer there, completely isolated windings. Um, so mains input comes in here. Um, this is probably a mains filter as well, I would imagine. Um, so onto the circuit board through that connector there. Um, that's, I'm guessing that's the primary. Um, and then this will be the secondary. Um, 
There's a couple of devices down on this heat sink. Uh, we've got a bridge rectifier and an LT1084. So yeah, a fairly beefy old school uh, regulator down in there. A um, couple of big caps. They are 22,000 microfarad, 16 volts. Uh, Philips branded. Let's see Philips branded caps much. Um, so there's a few bits going on underneath here, so I'm just going to take off this board here. Um, yeah, not a huge amount really. Uh, we've got more opto isolators out to those those DIN sockets, uh, so not a huge amount going on there. Uh, we've got the power light, um, the jack port for the accessory, and a couple of um, are they rechargeable batteries. Uh, I'm going to hazard a guess that they are rechargeable batteries. Um, um, no. <laughs> Absolutely nothing on that one, and we've got about um, 600 millivolts on that one, so yeah, that flat. Right, uh, let's take a look at this EEPROM, see if there's anything particularly interesting in it. It is a 27C010. Right. Let's see what we can find. Yeah, it's a bit of readable text in there. Right, I've just got this loaded into a hex editor. Um, so this is right at the beginning of the EEPROM. Uh, so right at the beginning here, um, we are going to have the reset vectors for the CPU. I'm going to imagine this is just mapped in straight, starting at, uh, at zero uh, in the memory space. So uh, these are going to define the uh, uh, initial vectors and I'm going to just trying to remember which one is which, but it looks like the code starts at 400 here. So uh, this is all going to be 68K machine code. Um, so not really anything to see in there. Without running it through a disassembler. Looks like the end of a block there. And there's some text. Uh, so we've got system OK, system undefined trap call, bus error, address error, legal instruction, so usual um, errors and things you're going to get on a 68,000. Um, spurious interrupt, real-time treatment failure, retail and watch dog detection, parity error on port A, framing error on port A, overrun on port B, undefined reading variable, blah, 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 blah. Sensor failures, temp sensor failures. So yeah, there's all sorts of monitoring stuff going on here. Um, saturation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's, it doesn't look like, so it's hard to tell really from um, what's in there of what this is actually doing, but it's going to be, have to be doing some floating point um, processing in um, um, in real time, presumably, uh, sending that out to the PC that would connect to it. And from then on, there is nothing else there. So uh, looking at this, it uh, looks like the, the EEPROM is about half full. So it's a 128K EEPROM. So there's about 64k of actual code and stuff in here. So yeah, who knows? Um, I wonder whether I should actually plug all this back together and see whether there's actually anything on the serial port. 
Right, I've just had this connected up to um, a serial port. I've tried both port A and B. Uh, various uh, board rates, bits, stop bits, all that sort of stuff. Can't really get anything out of it. Um, absolutely nothing on B. Um, got a few oddball characters out of um, serial port A. Um, but yeah, nothing um, certainly readable or ASCII. So I wonder whether the interface um, between this and the PC, presumably this connects to the PC, um, is possibly a purely binary thing. And you're not really expected to have any um, readable text over it anyway. Um, it could be the um, text strings that we saw in the EEPROM might have come out on a, a separate port somewhere. Maybe there's a diagnostics port or something in there internally. Um, but yeah, shame we didn't have the science element to this because uh, the calorimeter I think would have been a really, really interesting thing to take apart. But there we go. So I hope you found this one interesting. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. Um, comments in the comment section, please. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.